South Africa. We're on our way to a primary school. To get there, we're being escorted by locals, and they've had to ask gang leaders for permission for us to drive through here. Oh, there's the police in front of us. What's, what's happened? Uh, um, the police have shot the uh, juvenile. We're told police responded to gunfire between two gangs and they've shot one of the gunmen, a 16-year-old. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think the gangs are going to retaliate? They are gone. Yes, sir. Because the police did shoot the yeah, guy. So... They're going to attack you guys also. Yeah, it's going to be way more hostile. We're heading deeper into Hanover Park. People here call themselves coloured. They're an ethnic mix of Asian, European and African, and they live mostly separated from the black community. We've arrived. Blomflay Primary. This is caught in the crossfire of a gang war. We want peace! We want peace! We want peace! I'm told there are three gangs fighting to sell their drugs here. You're surrounded by gangs and their territories. Over there, you've got the Americans in that, in that housing sit just set back. Right in front of us, you've got the ghetto boys. And then the Americans again in those rows over there, away from us. And then over there, you've got the ghetto boys. A lot of these, the kids have done themselves. Imagine that being like your classroom exercise. Do you, make some posters so we can stop the gangs shooting at us. And told some young gunmen even wear school uniforms to hide amongst the pupils to fire on their rivals. Ratika Tagordian counsels troubled kids at the school. She's also lost her uncle and a cousin to gang violence. How often are the shootings happening? Shootings is now occurring daily. Daily. It's a daily thing. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night. And every box sounds like a war. The school's basically under siege, isn't it? So it's actually sad, it's sickening. Outside, she shows me bullet holes from a recent shootout and says they've trained the kids to dive on the floor when they hear gunfire. They started shooting, it was this gang. Just across the road, they shot over the field. And then that gang retaliated, and the shots came. The bullet actually went over my head because I was standing just here. Wow. Hey, yo, we've got company. <laughs> How are you doing? You right? You good? You're looking very fresh. 11-year-old Marizan is one of the pupils Ratika counsels and she's really worried about his recent behaviour. <laughs> What's he like? I like that Marazan you saw now. Yeah. We always tell him, be that Marazan. Don't be the angry Marazan. Don't be the arrogant Marazan. Hmm. Look who it is. I find him inside, heading to class. What's this? A cultural image of South Africa, the Indian people. Is that your book? She's worried he'll end up in one of the gangs. She says he's super bright, but his behaviour is holding him back. It's hard to imagine growing up normally. This gun battle was just a few streets from Marazan's home, witnessed by another young kid. I know that man. Mommy, I know that man! Nearly two and a half thousand have been murdered across the city so far. A lot of people here say most of the time the police don't even respond.
I want to know what's going on with Marazan, so I'm going to meet him at home after school. Kids have been killed. Nearly a thousand children have been murdered in the last five years. And like this year, uh, the statistics that we've got, the latest statistics we've got, is 279 kids in a year. Let's see if he's here. Hello. How are you doing? You're right. Yes. Marazan's house is just around the corner from where the police shot that young gunman and where four gangs are fighting right now. The Americans, the ghetto kids, the mongrels and the Talibans. Hi, is um, Marazan here? How are you doing? You okay? You good? He lives with his mum, dad, a brother and a little sister. What's your name? My name is Safi. 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 Oh, cool. How are you doing, Dad? You all right? Thank you. Can I sit here? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Ah. What's this area like? Is it safe? Is it violent? It's violent. They know like someone did. And shot him dead. And the children... I think they're on the corners because they're fighting each other. They're fighting each other. Hmm. Are you in a gang? Yeah. Which gang are you in? Barta Loco, blood in, blood out. What is, what is that? Varta loco, blood in, blood out. Varta loco, blood in, blood out. The Varta locos, Marizan tells me, is a kids' gang that he set up with his mates, chucking stones, copying what the real gangs do. Are you scared walking from school? I'm not scared. I was sh shot two times. And I was young, but I'm not, now I'm not scared anymore. You got shot two times? One. So what what happened? Why did why were you shot? Because we did fight and they shot us and cops they come and shoot them. He was hit with rubber bullets fired at gangsters who were fighting in the street. Stabby. Who 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 did that to you? One of the children, yeah, we did fight so and they shot us. Like every day, that's the size of us. Like we're walking with like this. If we catch you. Off the school, you know, we take a child and we stab you. But you could, you could kill somebody with those scissors. I know how to stab you. No, I am, I'm sure you know how to stab me. But what I'm saying to you is, um, you could end up killing yeah, somebody. I can kill someone with us. He's, he's a children, but my cow place times the restaurant. Marazan's gang might just be chucking stones at other kids, but I've heard this often leads to joining a proper gang. That's the thing about Marazani, it's glamorizing it. This is part of their life here, you know, the violence is absolutely knitted into their life. You got kids here playing football. A few hours ago somebody got shot and you got the military police here. Just surrounded by curious kids, but this is this is life in the flats. The army were deployed to the flats last year after 43 people were murdered in a single weekend. There are so many weapons on the streets here. Three years ago, a crooked cop was sent down for selling nearly 2,500 stolen guns into the flats. I've heard the gang shooters are getting younger and younger. I'm heading to meet one who started shooting when he was just 15. How you doing? You right? Have you ever killed anyone in these shootings? Do we want to do what this? You want to say? Do we want to skip this? I'm not supposed to make class service, man. Do you want to go to the store? No, I'm not. But you never go to the store. I'm not supposed to make enemy. How old were they? The 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 ghettos that you shot? The one was I'm 16 at that time. He didn't know I was one of the Americans, but I did know. I was a ghetto, so I talked to him, so when he turned his back on me, so I shot him one, one time through his head, and four times he shot him also through his head. How young were the people who were being used as shooters in the gangs? 13, 14, 15, up off. Do you think you could ever leave the gang? Pardon me? I was a gang, I'm a 
Tá, daí me ajuda agora, deixa eu mais outro aqui. Is this Marizon's future? Back in his neighborhood, I spot him out playing with his mates. Where's your other shoe? At home. What's he doing at home? Hello. Here, Johnny. Oh, Here, what are you doing? What? What are you doing with the shoes? Would you? Yeah, I know it's going to be sore, mate. You need both your shoes. It's scary to think Marazan might stab someone if provoked. I track down his mum at work to ask what's behind his aggression. Eight years ago from now, I was a drag addict, you see, and I was using drugs. Now, maybe that is my aggressiveness coming in by my kids. Marazan is throwing stones to each other, whatever. What drugs were you using? Uh, what is a mito? Crystal meth. Yeah, crystal meth, yeah. Are you worried about his future? Because he's a very smart boy, and you know these, there's a lot of big gangs around here, and they'd want somebody like him. Yeah, I do. That's why I went around to those I know. I told him I don't want this for my child. And if I miss with my children, I won't come to him. I've heard a former general of the Mongols gang might talk to me. I'm hoping he'll tell me why such young kids are joining the gangs. OK, just give me a second, guys. Our contact is a pastor. He's told me he can set this up. Let's see what the pastor can do. An hour later, we're filming again. The general says he's being harassed by the police and rival gangs, and he wants to hide where he is. Where can we? Where can we do this? Where can we talk? Why do the gangs choose children? The gangs don't choose the children. In the Cape Coast, there's nothing for the kids to do. They don't get pro proper attention at home. There's nothing. So for the, the children, the besties, they ran to the gangsters and became gang members. Child, he, he needs security in his life. He wants his life to be secure. Then he goes to the gangs. Then he feels secure there, and then he go, pa, 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 and he's proud about it. He said there's no, there's zero dreams for people. You know, if that's all you're surrounded by and that's all you aim towards, that's what you're going to end up being. I've come back to see Marazan. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? You good? You good? Dad, what's this here? Is there a chain number? I've landed what I must know a rough day in life. So... Dad tells me he's not in a gang now, but is his past influencing his son? Marazan, where are you? This way you sleep. Uh, how do I get in here? There's something that's probably from the door. This is my, that's my one. That's in her brother's one. Which one? This is yours? And that's your brother's? What happens here at night? People shoot. No, no, like in the house. What's life like in the house? Not so nice. What's that? Not so. My daddy did. Your daddy what? My daddy did. Smoke that smoke sometimes in the house. This is my lunch. That's your lunch. Okay. Dad, can I just ask about what he's been saying? What are you smoking? I'm smoking heroin. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jag var stängd så som att jag hade rum var stängd så stängde jag mig. Jag hade dem just nu drack på dem och all det stuff. Men det var det du. Jag stod med det du. Like, I can change everything of me. But not my family. That's the thing. I'm beginning to get just how much drugs and violence dominate Marazan's life. But most of the shootings take place at night. Just how bad does this place get? We're very lucky enough to stay at um, a house of Mr Abrahams. He's a very well-respected guy who's living in the area for about 45 years. So we can see exactly what life is like in Cape Flats on Friday night. Here we are. This is where we stay. So where, where's dangerous here? On this field. On this field? Because if you look here, this is where this side the Americans shoot from. And if you look that side, that is the area that the ghettos is coming from. That, that, that's the problem. There, look. They're hiding now. So they were just chucking stones at them. Yeah. That's how it started, yeah. These are all primary school kids. Mm. Now, if they all attend this school, then what happened? Is it, yeah. Did you hear a shot? Yeah, that's that side. We will expect these people here to be retaliating. Yes, das ist der Gangsters hier. They shoot every night. There's no police around, but the army turn up. I'm told the Americans have crossed into ghetto kids' territory and started shooting at them. Mr. Abrams wants to check if anyone's been hurt, so we're heading into the ghetto's turf. But you see them all now being restless and and and. Being on, on guard. Mm. There's the army. Where are you going? We're going for a drive. For a drive with the camera. Yeah. The soldiers are not from the flats, so they don't know their way around. So they are. This is now the heart of the ghettos. This is the shooting. Even after the shooting, there's lots of young kids still out on the street. This one. What was, what was he doing with that flamethrower? They rob you and then they like almost like yay. They're the shooters? They're part of the shooters, yeah. How do you know they're the shooters? I know them. In this square, this side, yeah. you'll find the other gun. Arbery, yeah. OK. Loitering on this side. And the army was standing here. Yeah, they got here pretty quickly, so they were here. They were here, yeah. OK. You see, this is the problem. That's a police van. Yes, yeah, yeah. But it's parked here. There's two police, there's three yeah. police. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the problem. You see the problem? Mr. Abrahams then tells me something I've heard a lot from the coloured communities here. So why did the military go in without the police? Now, this is the thing. Because it's heavy uh, ammunition, the police won't. Because if the army leave them, they're alone there. Mm. And that is heavy guns. But the thing is, you can, I, I don't know, can, can you understand it from their point of view? Because it's, you know, machine guns and, you know, but they are supposed yeah. to respond to that, aren't they? Yeah, you see, in, 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 the, in the Western Cape, this black policeman won't risk their lives for a coloured. This was coloured. Are you serious? There's a, yeah. a black policeman won't go into a coloured area? Yeah. 
We asked the police if this was true. They said that they provide a statutory response to gunfire in all neighborhoods. It's been a violent weekend. Even though the army's here, 47 people were killed across Cape Flats. It's just too easy to say that the gangs are the bad guys. Kids come from broken homes. Mum and Dad are doing drugs. They're dodging bullets at school. And then the gangs turn up. And they give you a gun. That's your future. There was a lot of shooting last night around here. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, I did. Where his mommy's working. The, the life that you had, you don't want that life for him? Because, no, that's not a, a, a nice life. Kinders, I had to do it, and it was clear. So, the other day, there was a scene about 13 years old. Most do it, it's a kid. Every night, we pray, like you should pray, we pray. And I was, I was sit there, go on. I tell my daddy, we stop tracking. I will also stop throwing stones. You also understand what I go through. It's not nice. Because my, my, my secret, what I want to talk with no one, they will never understand it. Because my mom did tell me, I must keep my secret. And my secret is, I want to put my mom in a better place. Because my mommy, I don't know, she's the closest one, near me. And that's why we don't know when is it the time because I can't handle all the stuff at home. And then I come from stones and all this stuff. And becoming aggressive and all that stuff. I can't handle it. That's my side of my lifestyle. I was worried that you were going to end up in a gang. I can't because my mommy. She, she's the one. Two weeks after we leave, a six-year-old girl was killed in the crossfire of a gang shootout in the Cape Flats.